Hello and welcome back and everybody Levi here today got a new deck tech here for you This is an Orzov deck. I have been building quite a few Orzov decks lately But I had an idea from a commander that I've tried to build in the past that being the ever-changing Dane It's an Esper sacrifice legendary creatures and get your dice triggered kind of thing with that commander But I never could really figure it out So when I saw this commander while thinking of that that same strategy I kind of put a few things together and it seems like a really viable deck. I like how it turned out So I'm just gonna go over the commander here Jarena, Dauntless, General, White, and a Black. Just a two-mana commander for a 2-2 human soldier. It says, when Jarena, Dauntless, General enters the battlefield, exile target player's graveyard. And seeing as this is a recursion deck, a aristocrats deck, I guess you could say, that ETB is going to be happening a lot, so your opponents are not going to be having graveyards pretty much at all. Also, it says, sacrifice Jarena. Humans you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. So, when you look at this commander on his face, you're probably thinking just like human tribal, and that obviously is a pretty good strategy and you probably could put some humans in here. In fact, I do have several, probably at least 15 or so. But the reason I'm building around this commander is it has a free sacrifice option on itself. Now, there is a few other commanders that do this, but I haven't found any that are as efficient as this one, being a two drop, being a two two, so it's easy to recur out of the graveyard. I think this is a really fun strategy and it seems pretty viable. Once I go over some of the things in the deck, there's a lot of little things that are working together and we're just gonna go over the first part here. We have some recursion in the deck. Deck. There's a few different types of recursion here. One is going to be repeatable ones, things that stick around on the board, and you can keep getting your commander back either once per turn or however many times whenever the uh, ability triggers. So first up, we're going to go over here. Adderkar, Valkyrie, four white, white for a four, five snow creature angel. Flying Vigilance has a tap ability. When target creature other than Adderkar Valkyrie is put into a graveyard this turn, return that card to play under your control. Obviously, we're not going to be getting this one out until a little bit later in the game, but when we do have this out, that's a free one every single turn to be able to get our commander back without having to pay any extra mana. That's really good, really efficient in this deck. Another one in that same vein, Carmen, Cruel Sky Marcher, three, a black and a white for a 2-2 Vampire Soldier with flying. It says whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, you put a plus one, plus one counter on Carmen, Cruel Sky Marcher, and you gain one life. And then whenever Carmen attacks, return up to one target permanent card with mana value less than or equal to Carmen's power from your graveyard to the battlefield. So we don't even need that first ability to trigger at all, seeing as how our commander is a two drop, that is eligible to be got from our second ability on Carmen immediately as soon as you swing with this thing. So just another great way to be able to get back your commander just an extra time per turn. The, the goal of the deck is just to sacrifice our commander as many times as we can. Some abilities we have like, you know, trigger only once per turn. So we'll want to do it on everybody's turn. And we want to save the ones that are instant speed for, you know, other people's turns. Another really good one here, Dawn of the Dead, two black, black, black for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life. And also at the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to play. That creature gains haste until end of turn. And then you exile it at the end of the turn so you may think that exile at the end of turn thing is going to be bad because we want to be able to recur our commander but before that trigger goes off we can obviously sacrifice our commander to its own ability therefore negating that exile clause and then that just equals a free recursion on our upkeep every single turn so that's a really strong one i like it another cool one here gift of immortality two and a white for an enchantment aura enchant creature when enchanted creature dies return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control then you return gift of immortality to the battlefield attach that creature at the beginning of the next end step so this is a little less good than the other ones you know if you have only one way to recur your commander like the gift of mortality and not other ways you probably want to use this first and then use the other ones so say you sacrifice your commander and then before the beginning of the next end step you bring it back with something else i don't think the gift of immortality will reattach to it seeing as how it's a new permanent so you just got to be careful of the sequencing here when you have this on your commander another cool one here luminous brood moth two white white for a three four insect with flying whenever a creature you control without flying dies return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter on it so this is like an every other time it dies you get it back for free kind of thing so you sacrifice it and then you can bring it back with some other ability like your Carmen cruel sky marcher and then once that brings it back it won't have a flying counter and then the next time it dies the luminous brood moth will bring it back again so you can get this one multiple times per turn if you have other ways to bring it back not just the luminous brood moth so it's really good with other other strategies in the deck another repeatable one here moira urborg haunt two and a black for a three two spirit wizard with menace whenever moira urborg haunt deals combat damage to a player return to the battlefield target creature card in your graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn so firstly it has menace which is really good for that combat damage trigger you know you swing this at somebody who only has one creature and then you're guaranteed to get that trigger only stipulation is you have to have sacrificed it this turn so if you have another way to bring it back you bring it back with that and then sacrifice it to its ability then have Moira bring it back with her ability so that one's really good a couple more notables here Rodadrobic of Urborg two white and a black for a 3-3 zombie wizard with vigilance and ward two 
two, which is always nice. Other zombies you control have vigilance. Whenever another legendary creature you control dies, you create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary, and it's a 2-2 black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. So this one technically isn't really recursion. You're just kind of creating a token of your commander. We only really care about the death trigger. So we don't really care if it's a token copy or our actual commander, because I'm going to go into some, obviously, some death triggers a little bit later that will help us win the game. But Rotodrobic just gets you an extra one every single turn that you don't have to pay for. It's really nice. Next up, this one could be good. It could be bad. I do have quite a few artifacts in the deck and some legendaries. So there is a fair amount of times that this is going to be able to trigger. Teshar Ancestor's Apostle, three and a white for a 2-2 bird cleric with flying. Whenever you cast a historic spell, return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So even if I'm not a heavy historic deck, I think it's worth it just to put this in here for your mana rocks. Like we've already seen in this section, there's a lot of other legendaries that will be triggering your Teshar, then getting back your commander. So last but not least, there is some one-shot effects I have here. Not dead after all, the most recent version, I believe, from Wilds of Eldraine. Just one black mana for an instant. Till end of turn, target creature control gains. When this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control, then create a wicked roll attached to it. The wicked roll is plus one, plus one, and then when it's put into the graveyard, each opponent loses one life. So just a nice little tiny bonus on there, but I did want to have some of the little one-shot effects that do get your commander back, even if you don't have some of these other ones, which you most likely will, but just in case, I wanted to have a couple in here. I don't have all of them, but the one mana ones I did put in here. So as you can see, it seems quite likely that we're going to be able to get our commander in and out of the graveyard several times per turn, if not on everybody's turn, and that will be able to get us a lot of death triggers. So obviously, you're in a black-white aristocrats deck, so you're going to have all the usual suspects like Cruel Celebrant, white and a black for a 1-2 vampire. Whenever a Cruel Celebrant or another creature or planeswalker you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So you have all of the ones that do that thing in this deck. You know, I have like six or seven options in here that are going to be getting you those death triggers, you know, pinging your opponents, gaining you life. That's the name of the game. That's pretty much how we're going to be winning. There are a few other ways we could win in the deck. You know, there's some token makers I'll get into a little bit later, but I think the aristocrats having your commander die and then recur it a bunch of times is going to be the best way to win. Next up, I'll go over some of the draw in the deck. First up, I got body launderer, two black black for a three three ogre rogue with death touch. It says whenever another non-token creature you control dies, body launderer connives. And when body launderer dies, return another target non-rogue creature card with equal or lesser power from your graveyard to the battlefield. So in addition to the card draw that it gets from conniving, it also is a recursion option. And as a reminder, conniving is just whenever it triggers, you draw a card, then discard a card, then you put a 1-1 counter on the creature for each non-land card discarded this way. So it's a little bit of cycling out for your deck. You know, you draw a card, discard the one you don't want. In fact, you could discard a better creature that you can recur with one of your recursion pieces here. Just a nice little incremental value that we'll be getting whenever our commander's dying. Similarly, Grim Heart Respects, two and a black for a 3-2 human wizard with morph for a black. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you draw a card. I have several options that are exactly like this, basically the exact same thing as this in the deck, you know, Midnight Reaper and Morbid Opportunist, that kind of thing. Basically, whenever a creature dies or a creature you control dies, then you're going to draw a card. Similarly, on the opposite side of the spectrum, I got Mentor of the Meek, two and a white for a 2-2 human soldier. Whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one if you do draw a card. So every time our commander dies and then is resurrected with one of our abilities, we can pay one mana and draw a card. Got another cool one here, Transmogrit's Crown, two mana for an equipment. Equip creature gets plus two plus oh, and whenever equip creature dies, you draw a card, equip two or one black mana. So if you have some extra mana lying around and you need some more cards, you just equip this every time your commander comes back into the battlefield and then you sacrifice it and then it draws you some cards. That paired up with some of our other draw effects. I don't think our hand's going to be empty very much in this deck at all, especially with cards like Tokaja's Welcome Around, two and a white for an enchantment. Whenever one or more creatures with mana value three or less enter the battlefield under your control, you draw a card, but only once per turn. So similar to the Mentor of the Meek there, but unlike that one, we don't have to pay the mana, which is really nice. Like I was talking about earlier, there are some token makers in the deck, such as Zathrid Necromancer, two and a black for a 2-2 human wizard. It says whenever Zathrid Necromancer or another human creature you control dies, create a tapped 2-2 black zombie creature token. So pretty much whenever our commander dies, we're going to be making that 2-2 zombie, and then we can sacrifice that to something else, get a little bit more value, maybe swing with it in combat, and then it'll die, and then get us more dice triggers, which is also really nice. Another one similar to lead to that one, Tesa Orzov Scion, one white black for a 2-3 human advisor. You can sacrifice three white creatures to exile target creature. Always decent. The main reason we're running this one is whenever another black creature you control dies, create a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying. So obviously it itself makes the white creatures, but there's also a couple other ones in the deck that does the same thing. Next up, I'll go over some of the removal in the deck. First up, Cathar 
Star Commando, one and a white for a 3-1. Human Soldier with Flash, you pay one, sacrifice it, destroy target artifact or enchantment. So I like this one over, say, something like Disenchant or something like that because it is, for one, it's a human. That's also really good. Two, it has a sacrifice ability, so it's dice triggers. And it is two mana value, which some of our recursion requires two mana value or less creatures. So it's able to be recurred with some of our recursion pieces. That way we can get more removal for our one card that we put in the deck, you know. Repeatable effects like this are always a lot better when you have a big recursion package like this. So that way you don't have to waste it on instants and sorceries that are just one shots like generous gift or something like that, which I do have in the deck. I think they are necessary because they hit any type of permanent, but you also want to pepper in some of these other ones like Westfold Rider, one and a white for a three one human knight, sacrifice Westfold Rider, destroy target artifact or enchantment, activate only sorcery. So it's basically the same thing as the Cathar Commando. However, we don't have to pay the mana for it, which is really nice. Another cool removal piece that fits flavorfully in the deck, Royal Assassin, one black black for a one one human assassin. You tap this to destroy target tapped creature. So it works in a couple ways. If our opponents are planning on hitting us, we can tap this and destroy the creature that's attacking us. And that's pretty good. But also just whenever a creature becomes tap, you know, if, if an opponent has a commander with a tap ability, you can tap this to destroy that. Also, it's a one one three mana. So it's easily recurred in our deck if somebody wants to go and destroy it. So I really like this small but efficient removal package that I'm running in this deck. It's cool. It's resilient. You can get it back with the recursion and it totally fits the overall theme. Some of the more unique ramp pieces here, black market, three black, black for an enchantment. Whenever a creature dies, you put a charge counter on it. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you add a black for each charge counter on black market. I have this in several of my decks that have a lot of creatures that are dying all the time or killing a lot of my opponent's creatures. And the amount of mana that you get from this is absolutely insane. If your opponents don't deal with this, you're going to be getting upwards of 10, 20 mana per turn because your commander is dying so often and so cheaply that once you have this out, you just get tons of mana every single one of your turns with it. Similarly, Pawn of Ulamog, one black black for a 2-2 Vampire Shaman. When Pawn of Ulamog or another non-token creature you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you create a 0-1 Eldrazi spawn with sacrifice this to add one mana to your mana pool. So not just ramp, it also gets us those sacrifice triggers. We have a few other ones that do something similar to this, but when your commander dies, you make one of these uh, spawn creatures, then it sacrifices to make mana, which then you can use for other things to get back your commander or to do other effects in the deck, which just gets you more value from your dice triggers or whatever it is. This one's pretty cool out of Nuka Penna. Haven't used this one yet, but it seems really cool. Life insurance, three white and a black for an enchantment with extort, which is always really nice because we are in kind of a pinger deck. Whenever a non-token creature dies, you lose one life and you create a treasure token. So, you know, you're sacrificing your commander three or four times per turn. You're getting a bunch of treasure tokens. Be careful. You are losing the life, but I think it's kind of worth it, especially since the treasures can help pay for the extort. I just like these enchantments that are sitting around getting us those dice triggers and then getting us a little bit of ramp on the side so that we don't have to rely on, you know, our mana rocks and stuff like that as much. Last but not least, I don't have a big utility package in this deck. Just a couple of cards here. As you guys know, I like to talk about my utility, just things that are overall good in the deck that don't really fit into any of the categories, but really help propel the strategy a little bit forward. So first up here, I got Maskwood Nexus, four mana for an artifact. Pretty much everyone knows what this guy does. It makes all your creatures every creature type, and you can spit out a changeling for three and tap. So the reason I have this in the deck is because I do have a lot of humans in the deck, but I also have a lot of non-humans in the deck that I would like to be able to protect with my commander if I just have it out. If I have this out and then I'm sacrificing my commander every single turn, that just means all of my creatures, not just my humans, get hexproof and indestructible anytime I want. So it's going to be really hard to interact with our board. You know, if you have your LSL core, your cruel celebrant, things like that, that aren't humans that are really destroying your opponents every time your, your commander is dying or one of your tokens is dying, your opponents are going to want to get that off the board before they die to it. So having Having Maskwood Nexus out along with your commander just makes your board really hard to deal with. And the last card I'm talking about here, Taste of Karlov, two white black for a 2-4 human advisor. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Creature tokens you control also have Vigilance and Lifelink, which is a little bit relevant because we do have some creature tokens in the deck. But getting those dice triggers twice instead of the once is just going to be insane value, especially with our damage, with our card draw, with our tokens, things like that. Taste is just an obvious include in this kind of deck. So that's really all I've got for this low to the ground recursion Orzov aristocrats deck you know you might think like Orzov aristocrats it's kind of been done to death you know Taysa Karlov is one of the most popular commanders in the entire format and she does the aristocrat things pretty well but I think this is a unique enough flavor to where it's different than some of the other sort of token creation aristocrats decks which I do have some of that in here but I also really just like the focus on sacrificing your commander and making your team you know hard to kill as opposed to just creating some tokens and then killing them and then draining your opponents like Sir Conrad or something like that. So that's all I've got for today. I have the entire deck list down in the description if you want to click on my architect link. Also, I just recently 
hit 500 subscribers. So I just really wanted to thank all of my viewers and subscribers that keep coming back and watching my videos for your continued support. I'm planning on making a lot more videos and hopefully being able to spend more time on this channel during 2024. So thanks so much for stopping by. Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions for this deck or for future decks that you might want to see me build, see my take on it. And that is pretty much all I've got. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, take care.